Braves. And here's the order in which they'll do it. Tonight's starting lineup brought to you by TikTok. Isaiah Conopalefa at third base leads off the DH Aaron Judge. Bat second, hitting third. Second baseman Glaber Torres. Giancarlo Stanton, the right fielder, cleans up. Batting fifth, the center fielder, Harrison Bader. DJ LeMayu, he's missed five games back in the lineup after that cap problem. He's at first base, batting sixth. Batting seventh, playing shortstop, Anthony Volpe. Kyle Higashioka behind the plate. Bats eighth and batting ninth and playing left field. It's Oswaldo Cabrera. And the Braves got their ace back. Max Freed, just his ace start on the year. Pretty good numbers across the board, but still kind of rounding into shape as he came back from a long IL stint. And let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scout Report for Max Freed. And it was a three-month absence, and it was scary. Anytime you hear forearm pain or elbow issues, you wonder about the future. But he is back, and he is a true ace in his career. He's 57 and 26 with a 3.06 ERA. That is a definition of an ace. And he's also left-handed and he patterned his curveball after Sandy Koufax. And that's a pretty good curveball to have and at least try to emulate. The defense behind him is presented by Buick. You've got Rosario on left, Michael Harris the second in center, Ronald Acuna Jr. over and right. Infield, Riley, Arcia, Lopez, and Olsen. That's third to first. Ozuna is the DH. Travis Darno, the backup catcher, will catch tonight, and he will be receiving from Max Freed. All right, so the beginning of this three-game set. IKF is ready. Freed is ready. And let's do it here in Atlanta. First pitch, ground ball, base hit through the right side. Love it. Don't let him get ahead of you. Fastball, get me over. Isaiah kind of for left, swinging with some confidence. One pitch, one knock. So here's Aaron Judge. Since coming off the IL, it's 15 games now, he has an on-base percentage of 453. And he has 18 walks. That's the most in the American League. 1-0. and The Yankees are 60 and 58. And the Braves are 75 and 42. Free deals. Chris Siegel is behind the plate. C.B. Buckner at first. Ben May at second. The crew chief, Jeff Nelson, is over third. Clips the outside corner. Two and one. Chris Siegel considered hitter friendly in his 10th big league season. Calls fewer inside strikes and fewer high strikes on left-handed batters. Three and one on Judge. Torres on deck. Another base hit through the right side. Harris cuts the ball off. Moving to third is Connor Falefa. Back-to-back -back singles for the Yankees. And they're set up. First and third. Nobody out here in the first. A really good at-bat from Aaron Judge as he did not chase pitches out of the zone and bought himself a fastball right there and absolutely blisters it. 112 miles an hour off of his bat. Going to go first to third here with nobody out. Here's Glaber Torres. He had three stolen bases in yesterday's game. Had his hitting streak snap. But did pick up those three stolen bases. Second baseman Lopez obviously shaded way up the middle with Olsen holding on Judge at first. A lot of the right side open. Most of the right side open. 2-0. Oh. 
the beginning of the year free two weeks out left hamstring problem then three months left forearm strain there's a strike and this is only his eighth start of the season and to see the year they're having and as you said Dave he's their ace they haven't had him Two on, foul away, two and two. Game time weather presented by Bigelow, the official hot tea of the A's. It's 88 degrees and it feels a lot hotter at 97. Slight chance of rain, humidity 64%. The wind out of the southwest at eight miles per hour. pop up shallow left Rosario makes the catch and the throw is cut off as IKF smartly held up so Torres does not get the run in that brings up Stanton Way outside, 2-0 on Stanton. You know, what made last game's uh, loss so tough is the Yankees did put up runs, and they've been having some difficulty doing that. You score seven, and you have a seven-run lead at some point. You expect to win the game, but that wasn't the case yesterday. Yeah, if you look at the win probability graph, if you're into those sorts of things, it was it was ugly. Yankees were at a 99% plus chance to win that game in the ninth inning. Three zero. Three and one. Now, even though there's a clock in baseball, pitch clock now, you still got to get three outs in the ninth inning. That's ball four. That loads the bases for Bader. This is exactly what the Yankees need to do with Max Fried on the mound. We mentioned that he's not quite up to full speed yet on a pitch count and forcing him to throw some pitches here in the first inning. Not only push his pitch count up, but get good pitches to hit. One of the guys you want up in this situation, he hits lefties very well. And hits well in these situations. There's a strike. Bases loaded four for five this year with eight ribbies, a couple of doubles. Bases jammed, top of the first inning. Missed outside, one and one. We've seen, the Yankees have seen everything the Freed features. Curveball, slider, four seam, two seam, and change-ups. One, one. See if they could turn two, it would be tough. They only get one, and the Yankees score with kind of Palefa crossing the plate. So an RBI for Bader. Runners move up to second and third, and the Yankees have a run. First base number 26, Steve Chang for One of those times it was good that it wasn't well struck. Yeah, Giancarlo got down to second base in a hurry, too. It was pretty hard slide in there, too, it was into second base. 
Here's LeMahieu. Missed five games with right calf issues, but wasn't bad enough to go on the IL. Since the also break hitting 319. Grounded to short. And that'll do it here in the first. One run, two hits, two left. Braves, go out him, he's in right field leading off. Michael Harris the second. He's playing center field. Austin Riley at third. Matt Olson cleans up and plays first. Travis Dorno will catch. He's going to bat fifth, batting sixth. The DH, Marcel Ozuna. Eddie Rosario in left field will bat seventh. Batting eighth, the shortstop, Orlando Arcia. And Nicky Lopez, the second baseman, will bat ninth. Ozzy Albies, at this point, missing his first game of the season, came up a little lame in the Sunday night game against the Mets yesterday. And Clark Schmidt towing the slab down here in Hotlanta. His 25th start on the year, and you can see those numbers are rounding into form. 31 walks, really good ratio to 110 strikeouts. Oh, and one. Let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scouting Report on Clark Schmidt. Consistent performer in his last 14 starts. He's given up three earned runs or fewer. And when, you, when people ask you about Clark Schmidt, what does he feature? It's a breaking ball package. It's cutters, it's sweepers, and it's curveballs. They're all high spin. They're all effective. Taking the next step. Grounded sharply and backhanded by Volpe. Sets and fires on one hop. One away. Nice defense by Volpe. So let's check out the Yankee defense presented by Buick, Cabrera, Bader and Stanton left to right in the outfield. Infield is kind of Falefa, Volpe, Torres, and LeMahieu third to first. Higashioka behind the plate, catching Schmidt. There's Michael Harris, and there's the strike. Usually bats at the bottom of the order. The numbers are good. Moved up there with the uh, scratching of... Uh, of Ozzy Albies in the lineup, he would usually bat second. An excellent defender in center field as well. There's a lot of credit to winning the Rookie of the Year last year to Marquise Grissom, former center fielder for the Braves who won the 1995 World Series with Atlanta. Worked with him last year and taught him how to be a pro. An underrated player. Marquise Grissom, maybe. He could lay out some line drives. He could run. He could defend. Did a little bit of everything pretty well. Played in 19 World Series games, Grissom did, and hit 390 in those 19 games. Checks his swing, one and two. Now Clark Schmidt said he's pretty much playing for free today. Whatever he gets paid per game, the amount of tickets he had to buy, he, he kind of breaking even. Over 50 family and friends are at the ballpark. Swing and a miss, Harris down on strikes. Oh, we talked about the breaking ball package. Is it a cutter? Is it a slider? That's more of the knuckle curve here at 85 miles an hour. All of them have really tight spin on them. An excellent break. One and zero oh to Riley. Having a tremendous season. Also has improved tremendously as a third baseman. That one is driven out to right field and deep. Stanton turns, looks, see ya. Home run the other way, tie game. what the Braves do. They have a relentless offense. They have power up and down the order. 
almost 105 miles an hour off of his bat and just a line drive out of here in a hurry. Hey. 29th home run for Riley. The Braves have now scored 117 first inning runs. Dodgers are second. They have 89 first inning runs. Now, if you're wondering what the major league record is, it's 160 first inning runs by the 1950 Boston Red Sox. Two and one. And the National League record is 147, the 2000 Cardinals. And yesterday's loss to the Mets, they scored thir three runs in the first inning. It's become a thing. And it puts the opposition on their heels a little bit. You're trailing right away, and you feel they have to do too much, and then you end up losing the game. And they could score in a number of ways, too, using their speed at the top of the order and going deep, as we just saw. Very athletic team, the Braves, up and down their order on both sides of the ball. Play good defense, they run. And this core nucleus of players is going to be around for a while. Three and two on Olsen. He has 43 home runs. The veteran manager, Brian Snitker, 40 years in the Braves organization. He's the perfect manager for this this group of players. High fly ball center field. Bader comes on, makes the play. That'll do it. The Riley home run on Friday, 105.2 off the bat, traveled 404 feet. He liked that distance, did it again on Sunday, this time at 107.4 off the bat. He's quick on the inner half with fastballs that are below the belt. Right at Olsen. One pitch, one out. And Michael, as you noted, 16 home runs for the rookie this season. When I spoke to him in the clubhouse in Miami, we asked him if there was any goal that he had from a power perspective coming into the season. And he said, no, there were no personal goals in that regard. One thing he does know, he feels like he is becoming a better player, a better hitter overall, and his confidence continues to grow. When Aaron Judge was asked about Anthony Volpe and what he thinks about his season so far and what he needs to improve even more, Aaron Judge simply said, more at bat. This is a young kid who continues to learn every time he's out there. Check swing, ground ball to Olsen, who flips to Freed. Two away. It's a great point, Meredith, and you, there is no substitute for just reps. Getting an opportunity to play. And Volpe's like the Braves every day. He's every day Eddie, right? He's in that lineup. The one constant up and down the order. So here is Oswaldo Cabrera. One and oh. One one. Yankees tried to keep some of their lefty hitters on the bench against Freed, so no McKinney, no Bowers. Another ground ball right side. The throw to first, not in time. You can see the Yankee approach, David, just go that way. See, Oswaldo Cabrera smells a hit, too. Cue shot, and you can see him just bust it right here. He knows he's going to get there. Right off the end of the bat. One for one in the scorebook. Oh. 
And a strike to Connor Falafa. Again, a lot of the right side open. That's where IKF singled in the first inning. Runner goes, he's picked off. And he gets in ahead of the tag by Lopez. Get another look, because they got him right there. Throw was a little high for Molson. I'm not sure. Stolen base. I get the stolen base out of it. The old swim move. Well, they've got the guy at the plate who's best in these situations. 327 with runners in scoring position. The only Yankee over 300 in these spots. Last year, the Yankees, same identical average. 327 runners in scoring position. Two and one. So he's in the fifth place since the beginning of last year in these spots. Line drive, it is a base hit inside the line. Kicks off the sidewall. Cabrera scores. IKF goes to second, but he overslides the bag, and he is tagged out for the third out. So an RBI single. He had the double, but he overslid the bag. Well, he did. A couple of really close plays at second base, but Kiner Falefa continues the magic with runners in scoring position. Grew up in Ackworth, Georgia, approximately 20 miles from the ballpark here. See the numbers in high school. And he loved Chipper Jones and Tim Hudson. Pitch outside as the Yankees lead 2-1. to one. A run in each of the first and second inning against Freed. Seems like every Atlanta question. I'm looking over to Jeff Quagliata over here. From a lo local kid. Made this trip. Heads up our research department. It's good to have him here. But yeah, he's he's the Atlanta, he's the Atlanta guy right here. Back home. Quags. One and two. the way you know, the everyday catcher in quotes is Sean Murphy he got hit in the head yesterday kind of over the cut but Travis Darno might be one of the best backup catchers in the game yes solid year re-signed loves it here they both have a great relationship and understand they can help each other out but yeah catchings they're pretty secure here in Atlanta with their catching tandem Ground ball to first, backing up LeMahieu. He'll take it himself. One down. Told you the Yankees are on a long road trip. Well, the Cubs, uh, the uh, the Braves just came off of one. They lost two or three to the Cubs. They split four with the Pirates, and they won three out of four against the Mets. So I'm sure they got into their beds really late last night, early this morning, because they had the Sunday night game at City Field against the Mets. Probably thrilled to be home. Yeah, had a long weekend in New York. Double header on Saturday. Sunday night baseball. Here is Marcel Ozuna. And a strike from Schmidt. There must be a fan giveaway here for the, you know in the stands because there's fans everywhere. It's hot though. I want to get one of those fans. I feel my, my face feels like a glazed donut here. And it is hot here. You know what I was always told as a kid, though, is that if you do that, it just makes you hotter because you're expending energy. Well, David's got a fan now. He's doing it. Two and one. Although this is 
cool compared to Miami over the weekend. Miami was worse than that. Oh, it was, it was, it was brutal. Thank goodness for that dome, but they don't really air condition properly. We're in the middle of August. This should have been a polo shirt, Yes Network requirement for the whole road trip. Yeah, but you know what? It's it's hard to really advocate for that. It was an indoor game. But we're outdoors today, tomorrow a t-shirt. And game three, I'm hearing absolutely nothing. Topless. <laughs> Harry Carey style. Well, suit up the season at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your Yankees at MLBShop.com. So Ozuna works a walk. That'll bring up Rosario. You look at Rosario, David, it's kind of like an afterthought on this team, but he's a good player. He is, and the postseason resume is pretty impressive, too. A couple years ago in the World Series. That's... That's the thing about these Braves is that they, the expectations are really high. They've been there. They've done that. Now they're trying to sort of capitalize on a little mini run they have here and maybe even a little bit of a dynasty potential here. Punches it the other way. It's a base hit. Cutting over is Cabrera. Ozuna will move to third. Hustling to second with a double is Rosario. Nice hitting. Like a little slider. But Rosario just stays down and through and shoots it the other way. Best part about that is an off-speed pitch, keeping your hands back and still going the other way with it. So the Yankees in at the corners, back at short and second. A ground ball to short, a second ties the game. Here is Arcia. Sky the other way and out of play. Sometimes organizations need a little luck, too. And when Dansby Swanson signed with the Cubs, they, there's no way that the Braves could have expected this kind of year out of Arcia. But he has been gold for them. Good defensively, too. Well, the Braves have their stars signed. I mean, they haven't signed for a long time, too. So they are going to be good for a long time. I mean, if you want to take a deep dive and see what Acuna gets paid, I mean, it's one of the great bargains in all the sports. Because he's one of the great players. There's a few guys in that category. Ozzy Albies, too, as well. John Hart, the general manager for the Indians back then, and now the Guardians kind of had that blueprint. Spun out of the way. Trying to go down and away. Double crossed, up and in. Swing and a miss, he chased. Chased the cutter down on strikes. Big strikeout for Schmidt. When we talk about the breaking ball package, the cutter's on the top end, more like a fastball at 93, but exceptional movement here. That, that ball just made a left-hand turn at 93 miles an hour. That was wicked. The difference between his, his pitches are really velocity from the low 80s on the curveball up to the low 90s on the cutter. Nicky Lopez fouls it off. You know, if you're a bench player like Nicky Lopez on the Braves, you don't get to play a lot. We were told that Charlie Culberson was up for 43 games earlier in the year and played one. Played one game. All these brave players want to play every single day. Yeah, it's, it's not much of a role on the bench. With that being said, Nicky Lopez is the perfect fit, though. Can play all over the field. 
really good defender with speed. Oh, and two. So Albies left last night's game with left hamstring cramping. That's why Lopez is in tonight. Albies had played all 117 games, so his first game out. There's a base hit. Inside third. That's going to score two. Lopez will go to second. No, he holds up. The throw goes into second. So a two-run single for Lopez, and the Braves lead three to two. Well, a real back breaker with two outs, another cut fastball, and not a bad one. Maybe left it on the plate just enough for Nicky Lopez to get inside out on it and shoot it right down the line. I was just going to say that Clark Schmidt has a really good cut fastball tonight, and Nicky Lopez went and did that with two outs. Both teams going the opposite way and benefiting from it. So Lopez, with that single, now has 20 ribbies on the season. And here is Ronald Acuna Jr. And a strike. All right, so let's check out the Genesis hitter scatter report on Acuna. Well, we mentioned, uh, you know, in the pregame and Meredith talked about it, but the power and the speed, 26 homers and 55 stolen bases, already scored 107 runs. And then in right field, he's got an arm cannon. I mean, literally a cannon for an arm. Well, maybe not literally, but he could really throw. And then talk about blazing a new trail. You know, maybe Ricky Henderson never really hit 30 home runs, but certainly had some big seasons, 28 and 87. Ricky did back in the day. Runner goes, pitches high, throw to second. He's in there. Well, we talked about Nicky Lopez can, can do a lot of different things defensively. He can also run. So even though role players don't get a lot of time on this Braves bench, he's a good fit. David, I think you're ahead of your time, though, because when we finally get the AI ball player, he'll have a cannon for an arm. <laughs> there you go. Literally a cannon on his shoulder. <laughs> but where he finishes up this year, I mean, what is the numbers? You know, we talked about 30-30 club, 40-40. Cunha's going to hit over 30 home runs, maybe even approach 40. Maybe 70 stolen bases, 75. Is he a 40-70 he a guy? He's blazing a new trail. He has a bet with his brother, the Mets farmhand, Luis Angel, that who's going to have the most stolen bases. And he said, but I play a month longer than him. He said, so I, I'm going to crush him. And he was asked what the bet is. He said, whatever I want. It's a good bet. Yes. He, he says his brother is better than him. I mean, I, I can't believe that, but he said his brother's better than him at this point. Three and two on Acuna. Grounded to short in the first, runner at second. Missed outside, so a walk. Check out tonight's injury report brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. We told you about Albies exiting last night's game in the eighth inning, a loss for the Braves. Left hamstring tightness. He was one of four players right at the top of the order who played every single game. So this is the first game that Albies has missed, but, you know, he could come in later. This would be his spot in the lineup where Harris is. And a trip to the mound to try to settle down Clark Schmidt. Spectrum One is fast, secure, and reliable. Internet for $49.99 a month. Free advanced Wi-Fi and a free mobile line. Restrictions apply. Visit Spectrum.com for details. 
So Blake has his say also to give Schmidt a little bit of a blow there. Long inning so far. Yeah, he was one pitch from getting out of it to Nicky Lopez with two outs. Now, several pitches later, got to start a fresh at bat here. Gets Michael Harris. Line drive, it's a base hit to left field. Lopez rounds third. He's coming home, the throw cut off. It's an RBI single for Harris. And now the Braves lead 4-2. Just a lot of different kinds of hitters up and down the lineup that present problems for pitchers. They go the other way. They're aggressive early in the count. They take pitches. They have power. They have speed. Michael Harris just hitting it where it's pitched. And another back-breaking two-out RBI. So here's Riley, went the other way, opposite field home run in the first inning, his 29th homer of the year. And a strike. And that one gets past Higashioka as the runners move up. Another cut fastball that just gets away from Kaio Higashioka. Now here in the second inning, pitch number 50 about to be delivered. You can see he is completely sweating through his uniform top. Hot, humid evening here in Atlanta. Did you enjoy pitching in Kansas City in front of family and friends, or would you prefer that not happen? No, I did enjoy it, especially the first time you get you get a chance to do it, but sometimes it can be a distraction as well. Making sure everybody's taken care of. Foul the way. Especially with a big pass list like that. Mm -hmm. So what is it? Players get six tickets? Yes, I mean you got to go. You got to go to the traffic gotta, secretary and, and make some negotiations, and then talk to other players right. about using their tickets as well. Otherwise, you have to buy them. Absolutely. Two two, swing and a miss. Got it. Got him with the breaking ball, but the Braves score three. They leave two. Social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers. We might spotlight you in a future game. We might. Judge leads off against Freed and pitch inside. 1-0. Judge single through the right side in the first inning. Yankees had the bases loaded one out in the first. They managed just one run on a ground out by Bader. And that's been a bugaboo for them of late. A lot of bases loaded, nobody out, and they don't score. But getting one run also not a great victory at that time. You, you know you have to put up a crooked number against the Braves in the series. One and two. Got a friendly call there. Judge calls time, steps out. Now back in at one, two. Four, two Braves are in the third. Just got a piece to stay alive. Pop up, shallow left center. And Rosario makes the play to retire Judge. Second, 
That brings up Glaber Torres. Torres. In the first inning, shallow fly ball to left. And that was with runners on first and third. Nobody out. There's a strike. As good as the Braves have played this year, the rotation was somewhat of a question mark with the injuries, but Max Fried gives them a presence. Shallow right center. Who's going to get it? It will be Acuna for the second out. Check out and follow Yes Network on TikTok for more content. Go back to 2021, it was Max Fried on the mound. The six shutout innings in the final game of the 2021 World Series was dynamite as he was lights out that night. Here's Stanton. That one's popped up. Darno behind the plate. Darno makes the play and the Yankees go down meekly one two three we'll go to the bottom of the third now we go to the bottom of the third inning and the Braves lead the Yankees four to two in the first game of this three game set Schmidt deals pitches high one and oh you know the Braves end up not re-signing Freddie Freeman homegrown loved in this town and then they pivot and get this guy and it's been a home run for them as he dunks that one in to right center he'll be held to a single a nice play by Bader but Olsen the perfect replacement for Freddie Freeman who's having the MVP level season with the Dodgers but they have not skipped a beat with Olsen yeah that is the thing that the Braves when you know you're going good is when this guy takes the place of a Hall of Famer Freddie Freeman was so well loved down here no easy task, but in his second year as a member of the Braves, he's gotten better. Well, he's on pace for 60 homers and 148 ribbies. They get the force at second. On to first. Ball is dropped by LeMayu, allowing Adorno to reach. Kinder of Falefa does a good job. Gets rid of it. Glaber just a little wide and low with the throw. TJ couldn't quite corral it. So here's Ozuna. Ozuna essentially has been the regular DH for Atlanta, but he's working with Ron Washington trying to become a bit more proficient at first base to spell Olsen every now and then. You know, when you try to ask around about what's the Braves' secret sauce? Well, they are a heavily analytic team Well, with Alex Anthopoulos as their, their GM. But their coaching staff have been around forever. They're all veteran guys who take the numbers and apply them the way they think it would work with those players. And that seems to be a growing trend in baseball. Well, they have balance, without a doubt. And Kevin Seitzer, the hitting coach, has been around the game a long time. And Walt Weiss is probably a manager in waiting right there, highly regarded. But all ex-players. Grounded and pass to diving IKF. And down the left field line, it kicks off the sidewall. Darno will stop at third. It's a double for Ozuna. Got him out in front just enough, but he got it down the line. Pass to diving Kiner for Leffa, who can play some third base. The Braves' relentless attack keeps coming after you. 
that double gives Ozuna a 12 game hitting streak. Here's Rosario as the Yankees have to bring the infield in. They're down by two, four to two. And with an offense that has trouble scoring runs, they can't allow runs to score on a ground ball. But you also run the risk of a ball squeezing through the infield and then two runs score. Oh, and two as Rosario chases upstairs. not go according to Jeff Nelson well, the Braves certainly have some electric footwear going not sure what that's orange in the box there and then on second base Ozuna's got lime green mm -hmm. looks like one of those highlighters there's a base hit Dorno scores here comes Ozuna. He scores. And on the throw home, Rosario goes to second. And the Braves lead 6 to 2. Well, Rosario goes up out of the strike zone here this time. Last time he stayed back on a breaking ball and shot it the other way. This time, a high cutter that he turns on. He'll pick up a couple RBIs on the way. Well, Schmidt has been so reliable of late, uh, but tonight he does not have his A stuff. There's a strike to Arcia. One thing that Paul O'Neill pointed out when we were down in Miami, David, that it's almost imperative that the Yankees score first and get a lead, like what they did with the Volpe home run, the three-run home run. He said, because when they're trailing, you see them get out of their plan. They try to do too much. They expand the zone, and they don't score. And now they're down 6-2 here in the third. There's a line drive to center field. It's a base hit. Rosario rounds third. Here's the throw from Bader. He is safe. Rosario got up and retouched the bag. He scores. And moving to second on the throw is Arcia. And now it's 7-2 Atlanta. Harrison Bader made a nice throw. Just that Kyle Higashioka couldn't catch it. I don't know if it short hopped him or he thought he had it. The throw beats the runner. Yeah, a little bit of a short hop. Well, Harrison Bader tried to get it there all the way in the air and just a little short hop that Higashioka could not hang on to. Otherwise, probably gets him out at the plate. Yeah, he did think he had it in his glove, then realized it was not there. The Braves scored three in the bottom of the second and back it up with three here in the bottom of the third. There's Nicky Lopez, two runs single in the second. 0 oh, and 1. Another base hit. Garcia rounds third. He's coming home. He will score. It's an RBI single for Lopez, and the hits just keep on coming. And now the Braves are up eight to two. The 
this Braves offense is like a pinball machine. Just line drive shooting everywhere all over the field. Nicky Lopez, the latest addition to this Braves lineup. Fitting right in. Time called as Higashioka walks out. And Ian Hamilton getting ready. Now, we know the Braves are a great offense, David, but is Schmidt doing anything wrong tonight? Well, it looked like early in the first inning that he was going to have his good stuff. He had a really good cut fastball, but since that point, it seems like he's lost a feel for his fastball at all. So when you can't throw your fastball where you want to, then the Braves hitters are going to just sit off speed. So it has not been a great homecoming for Clark Schmidt. Boone has not made the signal. He's waiting just to give Hamilton more throws, and now he finally does make the signal. And Schmidt's night is over, friends here, but this is an unrelenting offensive attack that the Braves have. So the Yankees don't like using Ian Hamilton in games where they're losing either. But they've got to cover these innings now, and you have Severino starting tomorrow. Yeah, you could you could see that uh, Aaron Boone was struggling with the decision here. Try to get Hamilton up. Tried to give him extra time to get him in there. Not optimal on the Yankee side. Severino will get the start tomorrow. Why? Because they're out of starting pitchers, and he has not pitched well. But they don't have many other options. So Hamilton against Acuna. Tap slowly right side. It's going to squeeze through for a base hit. Lopez will go to third. And Acuna gets a seeing eye single through the right side. First and third. Yeah, even when they don't make solid contact, it still finds a way to get to the outfield grass. Acuna fooled on this out in front off the end of the bat. That's the kind of contact you try to induce as a pitcher. So here is Michael Harris, the second, first and third, still one out. Six hits in this inning, and still just one out. Ten hits on the game. They're leading 8-2, the Braves are. In this game, Acuna and Harris have batted in each inning. And unless there's a double play, Riley will join that group. Two and oh. Well, it's legit. I mean, the Braves, based on the quality of their contact tonight, collectively have an expected batting average of 373 off the Yankee pitcher so far. And Clark Schmidt, his sinker, the average exit velocity on his sinker was 97 miles an hour off of the Braves' bats. So that leads you away from your fastball. When they're hitting your sinker, your fastball that hard, then you start throwing breaking ball after breaking ball. You have to throw it over the plate. The Braves adjusted, started hitting line drives all over the field. Three and one, very close to a pitch violation, pitch clock violation for Hamilton. It was at one second when he began his delivery. And there's ball four to load the bases for Riley. You know, David, we spent a good deal of time on the open talking about how did the Yankees bounce back from such a devastating loss. 
and in baseball, you, know, you, you talk about that a lot, but it, it all comes down to momentum goes only as far as your next day's starting pitcher. So if the Yankees got a great starting performance from Schmidt, you go, wow, they really bounced back well. Well, Schmidt didn't pitch well, so it looks like they didn't bounce back. That's exactly right. It's, it's easy to feel sorry for yourself in this game. The woe is me. Here we go again. Yankees have the infield back, except at first, looking for the double play. Riley one for two, a home run in the first inning. He has the bases loaded here. A strike, one and one. There is definitely a culture about the Braves that has been here for a long time, going even in modern history back to Chipper Jones. Let's see if they turn two. Volpe, one, on the first two. And Hamilton gets out of further trouble. The Braves score four. We go back scoreboard. Harrison Bader will lead off against Freed. One and zero. Oh. Looks like a full house here at Truist Park. Very few seats are empty. Yankees have had a great road trip in terms of attendance. 100,000 people in the three games in Miami. Pretty big crowds of three games in Chicago. And this looks like a sellout, the first of three here in Atlanta. High fly ball, shallow right field. Acuna makes the play. Told all the games here at Truist for this series are standing room only. These two teams obviously have a history. The Yankees knocked them off in 96 and 99 in that incredible run of great teams that the Braves had. The only World Series they won, though, was in 1995. And in 96, they got off to a great start. Andrew Jones with two home runs in that first game against Andy Pettit. He was 19 years old then. Yankees lost the first two games, came back, and won the next four. And in 99, it seemed easier. The Braves always had great pitching, great starting pitching, but we knew if we could match them that our offense was a little deeper. Especially in 99, coming off the heels of the 98 team. This Atlanta Braves lineup here today we're watching is more similar to those lineups when Scott Brochers was batting ninth. Every time I see Smoltz, John Smoltz, or Tom Glavin, or Greg Maddox, I always say, you know, if you had Mariano Rivera, it might be a different story. <laughs> That's going back to the early 90s, 1992, when the Braves lost to the Blue Jays. So in three of their losses, you haunted them. I, I had a front row seat. I certainly did. And I, I remind Quags of that all the time. Jeff Quagliata and actually signed his book that way. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And I'm sure that, you know, when you see Smoltz, he gives you side eye. Trivia. Five Hall of Famers play for the Braves in the 1996 World Series. Who are they? Tweet your answer using hashtag guest network trivia. Although there's no Twitter anymore. X your answer. Here is Volpe. And that's what that's what Elon tells me, right? Yeah. He changed it. It's almost like he took a word out of the language. People don't tweet anymore because it doesn't exist. Birds tweet, but people don't. Volpe lined out to first in the second. 1-1 one, one count. And free deals. 1-2. and two.
Fly ball, shallow center. And it's going to dunk in for a base hit. Volpe sees nobody's covering second and hustles it into a double. Lopez was there, Arcia was there, Harris was there, and then no one was there. Exactly. But the only guy that could be there would be Max Fried, the pitcher, if you have the presence of mind to, to see what's happening. Volpe saw what was happening. Nobody home. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. too late to recover. That one gets away from Darno as Volpe advances to third. Scored a wild pitch. That's that's a wild pitch. No chance for Darno there. Robert, if you had Robert, David Justice, after the 2000 World Series, which he was a part of for the Yankees, he said, if we had had Rivera in Atlanta, we would have won three or four World Series. He said, he's that good, I'm telling you. He's every bit of what they say about him and then some. Ground ball to third, Riley. Gets Higashioka, and that'll do it in the fourth. Yankee strand one. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Home field. A couple of left field right down the line. Left center, right center. You add all those lines up. It looks like spaghetti, but it's 43 home runs. Cadillac scoreboard, 8-2. Braves over the Yanks. He hits them a long way, too. The Braves actually lead the major leagues with 22 home runs over 450 feet. It's almost twice as many as anybody else. You know, when you look at the Braves offense, they lead the majors in runs per game, in batting average, and on base percentage, in slugging, and in home runs. And coming into this game, they're on pace to hit 315 home runs, and, and the major league record is the Twins with 307 in 2019, and that was the, the heart of the juice ball time. A lot of teams had that many home runs, not as many as the Twins at the top, but the Braves could beat them this year. He was a gold glover at first, too. Pretty good. It's strange because if you asked, well, what would be your top three in the National League MVP? It would be Acuna, Freeman, and then Olsen. And even Freeman was asked who would be the National League MVP. He said, oh, Ronald Acuna Jr. Well, Freeman's having a tremendous season. So 3-2 on Olsen. And there's a walk. Now if you look around this ballpark right now, you see all the people with the fans. And I think they hand them out to the fans. It, it is really hot and humid. But uh, it, it's almost a part of it. They used to do the chop here and no more. It seems like they're just using fans. And it says, I'm a Braves fan. You get it? Fan. One away, here's Darno. Right. 
You know, Darno was in trade rumors last month, but then the, the Braves put that to bed, signed him to an $8 million extension for next year with a team option for 2025 at $8 million. And he knows he's going to be the backup catcher, but as David said earlier, he likes being here. And $8 million and nice living. He's looking for hardware. Yeah, he was the uh, the catcher during the 2021 World Series. Once more. Catches about a third of the games, backing up Sean Murphy. Last year, he made his first All-Star team. Nice play there by Torres. There's one on the first. A slick double play by the Yankees. 4-6-3. Yes, well done. Glaber not biting on trying to tag. Just flip it and let Volpe handle the rest. Good awareness. The way the play developed, Olsen ducked, and Glaber had a duck because he was in the way of uh, Volpe as well on the throw to first. So Hamilton trying to restore order and put a zero on the board for the Braves for the first time in this game. They scored one in the first, three in the second, and four in the third. Fly ball right field. Stanton is there. And the Braves don't score as he has an interlocking base that will match up with an Aaron Judge number 62 bobblehead. And that'll be given out on September 23rd. Cabrera leads off, takes a ball as he showed bunt. As we start the fifth inning, it's 8-2 Atlanta. Ground ball, first base, and that eats up Olsen and ends up in right field for base hit. That's some top spin on this one as he tries to back up, and it just eats him up. Come and get it or back up. Made the wrong choice there. You can see that spin just pick up speed right on by. Here's Kanafalafa, who was two for two. Base hit. With that base hit, Cabrera now two for two. You know, the Yankees, as we mentioned, just two games over 500. They they obviously have designs on getting into the playoffs, of course. But one thing that does loom if they continue to struggle, they have a streak of 30 straight seasons of finishing over 500, which is the second longest in baseball history. This could be two. One, two. The record, as I mentioned, is 39. That was the 1926 through 1964 New York Yankees. Around the horn. Nicky Lopez, a nice little turn there. Here's Judge. One for two. And a strike. One one. Freed at sixty two pitches. They want to keep them around eighty. Two 
two and one. Hit shortly and grabbed on the glove side by Riley. Took a base hit away from Judge. And quite a career, Hall of Famer, five-time All-Star, five gold gloves. It's like you're playing a pickup game in the park and your grandfather comes off the bench and says, hold my beer. I'll show you. Audi scoreboard, 8-2, Braves over the Yanks. Hamilton still in there. 1-0 and to Rosario. Rosario single and a double, two ribbies, two runs scored. Imagine having the guts to be a knuckleball pitcher and then get his 300th win without one except for the last pitch. You know, I saw Gaylord Perry, a famous spitballer, Hall of Famer, do that late in his career when he's pitching for the Royals, and he went through all, you know, all the faking out, you know, touching his ear, touching his hat, and he didn't throw a spitter the whole night. He did the same kind of a thing, curveballs and sinkers, and pitched a shutout. And Gaylord would not show you how to throw a spitter. I tried, I tried like heck for him to teach me the tricks of the trade. He would not do it. Said I was too young, I might hurt my arm. But I had hurt my knee back then in the Meyer Leagues, an ACL injury, and I got to keep the video camera at Royal Stadium at home, and I videotaped that game from Gaylord Perry. He took a lot of pride in that, similar to what Necro did right there. Five ball shallow center. Bader pumps it away. So Gaylord at that time probably was about twice your age. Yeah, he was. Did you ever hang with him or just pestering him about the spitter? Just pestering him, yeah. He didn't want anything to do with me. <laughs> He'd play catch with me before the game. Did he throw a spitter to you? No, Never? he would not. He wouldn't even show it to me. In the famous George Brett pine tar game, he grabbed the bat and ran up the tunnel. They were looking for the bat, and it was Gaylord Perry who grabbed the bat. Tried to hide it, yeah. Was right before the Royals broke in with guys like Mark Gubaza and Brett Saberhagen back in the mid 80s when the, the Royals finally won a World Series title in 1985. But yeah, they had Vita Blue and Gaylord Perry and some veteran pitchers hanging on. Now I'm going to help you out here, David. Did you, I know you're, you're close with Gooby, Mark Gubaza? Did you call him today? I, I, I texted him in cinema. Yeah, All I said, right. happy birthday, Rumi. Good. 61 years old. I can't believe that. Yeah. He looks great. And also, the birthday of your ghostwriter. One of your ghostwriters, your first one, Bob Clapper's his birthday today. Writer for NJ.com. One and two on Arcea.
popped up behind the plate and out of play. You know, you look around this ballpark and on the grandstand, they have like soccer style lighting. You know, usually you see those toothbrush lights, which they have in the outfield, but around the grandstand, it's the soccer style lights. Because they also have a target field in Minneapolis. You know, the Braves kind of built this whole area. They own these buildings beyond right field, and it's been uh, a financial bonanza for the organization. And other teams want that. You see what happened with the Cardinals. They have, like, Cardinal Village and things like that. That's what teams crave now. Yeah, come early, stay late. You know, I was reading a story in The Athletic about the Orioles' lease at Camden Yards is up at the end of this year. And they're negotiating because they want this sort of thing. And the state of Maryland is saying, we don't have the land. Swing and a miss because this place, when they started building it, David, this is like 60 acres of open land, which the, the Braves were able to do it. But at Camden Yards, they're kind of landlocked. They can't just take buildings away and, and give it to them. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Hard to fathom the Baltimore Orioles not playing in Camden Yards. Well, I don't think we have to fathom that because they have no leverage because Ma Rob Manfred, the co commissioner of baseball, came out and said, as long as I'm the commissioner of baseball, he's signed for another five years. Orioles are never playing anywhere. And the owner, John Angelo, said, um, there's no way that we'll ever move. Base it. I think he said as long as Fort McHenry is guarding the seaport or the inner harbor, the Orioles will be playing in Baltimore. What a night for Lopez, huh? Three for three. Getting a rare start. He must feel somewhat liberated coming from the Royals to the Braves here. And It came over at the trade deadline. Within a week, Dickie Lopez was talking and raving as we see a pitch clock violation there. He was talking and raving about Ron Washington, saying he's never heard such things from a coach before. He'd already learned so much in one week of doing infield practice with that man, Ron Washington. And Dickie Lopez has been around the block. I mean, he's not a rookie. Ron Washington is revered by those that have worked with him. Remember, Eric Chavez won a gold glove with the uh, Oakland Athletics and gave it to Ron Washington. He said he earned it because he turned me into a gold glove third baseman. Managed with the Texas Rangers took in the World Series. And I was told yesterday by David O'Brien, longtime writer who covers the Braves, that Washington loves it here so much that he would not have taken some managerial jobs to leave. It would have to be a special one for him to leave this place. And a lot of the coaches do not make high market value as coaches, but they stay here because they just love the vibe. They love the city and they love the team. Walt Weiss, Ron Washington, Rick Kranitz, the veteran pitching coach. Two and two on Acuna. Hamilton up there. This will be his 44th pitch. It's going to burn him for a couple of days, at least. 
And there's ball four. You know, Schmidt not giving them length puts them in a, a, a tough situation, especially with Severino pitching tomorrow. And then as long as Brito and Vasquez are in the rotation, they, they want to use an opener. So they just can't empty out the bullpen. So short starts by the likes of Schmidt and say if Garrett Cole ever gave them one, it poses problems. And Michael they had some thoughts of stretching out Michael King they said that before his first start in a long time and I spoke with Michael King today and he said still no decision has been made on him he expects to be out in the bullpen probably not available today after throwing 40 plus pitches the other day but he said he'll be in the pen until further notice so the Yankees have to decide what they want to do with him but if they have to use him in one of these games obviously not an option to start anymore. They do expect that they'll get Rodon back relatively soon, though, so that should help kind of fix some of the gaps in that rotation. Two and one on Harris. Bottom of the fifth inning, 8-2 Atlanta. 8-11-0, leading 2-6-0. Popped up. Volpe makes the play, and that'll do it. All in all, not a bad job by Hamilton as we go to the six. 11 homers, 37 ribbies uh, over a very short period of time. He's having some year for the Cubs. Montefiore Einstein, we go to the six. It's 8 2. Atlanta leads. So, David, you've done it. You've, you've pitched over 30 starts a year. We all marvel at Otani, but how long can a human being continue to keep up this pace and hit and play every day and pitch every every six days in this case? Yeah, but it's a legitimate question. But he is so highly motivated to push on and do this, to do what nobody's really ever done before. And also, there, there's... A, a variable that goes into signing him for any team that tries you've got to have six starters because he doesn't pitch in a five-man rotation you have to have six starters in order to employ Otani as Torres grounds out I guess it's worth it because you're getting 40 to 50 home runs with it too yeah that's part of it and a lot of teams have a pseudo six-man rotation going anyway with off days and Trying to give extra days rest here and there. But yes, he, he does require some a different style of management. And there's a strike. I think from his standpoint, he's sort of quality over quantity, right? How many MVPs can he win before that time comes when he can't do it anymore? And when he's a free agent and they sign him to that big contract, whatever team that is, they expect him to do it for the length of that contract. That's the question. How far do you go out? One and two on Sten. I talked to Phil Nevin earlier this year about Shohei Otani, and he says that Shohei Otani is the most calculated player he's ever been around. He wakes up in the morning thinking about how to be the best player in the world and what he needs to do sleep wise diet wise workout wise. Phil Nevin mentioned earlier this year that he was scheduled to pitch in Fenway Park on Patriots Day which is an 11 a.m. start. And Nevin went to him and asked him, maybe we'll skip a day, we'll push you back a day. And Otani was, no, no, I'll go to bed at 7.30 at night, and I'll get an extra half hour sleep all week, every night. Wow. He was that calculated. Up and out of the zone and right on by Giancarlo Stanton. Tell you what, David, Freed looked 
shaky in the first inning, but boy, has he found it. That's what run support will do for you, give you some confidence. But you're right, Michael. He's much better now than he was before. Still not a lot of swing and misses, just two on the night. He's thrown 74 pitches, only two swings and misses all night. Although he's gotten that curveball going. See, his pitch count is very much in good shape now. As when you're throwing that few of pitches from the third through the sixth, you're putting the ball in play. But he is a strikeout pitcher. You know, he, he does it all. He's also a great fielder, three-time gold glove winner. He's 29 years old, seventh big league season. Last year, 14 and 7, 2.48. Finished second in the Cy Young behind Sandy Alcantara. Second time in the last three years that he finished in the top five. He was fifth in 2020. And he was the last pitcher ever to win a silver slugger because he could hit too before the National League adopted the DH. There's a swing and a miss, three and two. So he wears 54. His hero is Sandy Koufax, and his favorite pitcher to watch was Clayton Kershaw. Koufax wore 32. Kershaw 22. He added him up. 54. Up the middle and through for base hit for Bader. All right, it's time for that answer to the trivia question we gave you. Five Hall of Famers played for the Braves in the 1996 World Series. Who are they? Glavin, Smoltz, Maddox. The three pitchers, Chipper. And how about McGriff? The newest member, Crime Dog. We did it, David. Take a bite out of crime. And a strike to LeMahieu. challenge yep they will challenge New York is challenging the out call at first base well either way it's an elite pickoff move probably the one of the best we've seen since Andy Pettit who I believe is around I thought I heard he was going to be around the Yankees this week that's Andy Pettit like that move Lift the leg, hang, look like you're going home, and then flip it over there at the last minute. I think he's safe. I do, too. There's obviously been the rules changes this year that have impacted the running game, although I don't think Harrison Bader's trying to steal there down all these runs, but compare last year to this year, Michael. It's already 1,234 stolen bases this year at this point in the season. Last year, there was only 1,226. So Major League Baseball collectively has already passed the point of last year's mark and at a higher success rate as well. Well, they um, are taking their time looking at this. And it's hard to tell exactly where the tag was applied. Did he get him on the elbow before the mitt touched? See, I, I don't think he did, but the, the, if, if, they, if they feel that he just brushed that elbow, they might not overturn it. After review, the call in the stands, the runner is out. 
So he's picked off one three. Not enough to overturn the offense of Joe Torre during those championship years. And we used to love seeing him there. Albert Abreu takes over. Montefiore Einstein scoreboard 8-2 Braves over the Yanks. You know, you know, Michael, you mentioned about the Yankees base running this year and outs on base. And, you know, baseball reference has a base runner stat that shows that the Yankees last in the American League in that category. Runs from base running. Seems like they make a lot of outs on bases or not a really good base running team this year. Oh, what a grab by Volpe, but he can't make the play as Raleigh beats it out. David, you watch every game and then you see them trying to go to third on a ball hit in front of them, making the first or last out at third base. I mean, they really make errors that you shouldn't be making in the big leagues. And they're also a team that's not blessed with speed, David. Yeah. Well, the Baltimore Orioles lead the American League in that category at plus nine runs from base running. The Yankees minus eight, dead last in the American League. And there's a strike to Olsen from Abreu. Well, Olsen, when he got traded here, see his slugging percentage with runners on base. It was it was a return home. He's from Lilburn, Georgia. And he copied or tried to copy his idol, Chipper Jones. So they make the trade with the A's after losing Freeman. And it was like bang bang. They told Freeman, well, we're not gonna give you what you want, and they made the trade. And uh, they immediately signed him to a very team-friendly contract, eight years, 135 million. And they would have had to pay Freeman more. And there's a base hit through the left side. Riley will go to third. And the throw comes to second, holding Olsen to a single. Well, it's a good point as we'll take another look at Olsen. He's a really good low ball header. Think about the Braves. Okay, we're going to lose our starting shortstop who we developed in our system, Dansby Swanson. And we're going to lose our Hall of Fame first baseman, Freddie Freeman. And what do they do? They do not skip a beat. Having one of the best years in franchise history right here as we watch this unfold. And the Freeman decision, I'm not going to say it was sloppy, but he wanted to come back. I mean, he was crying. He, it broke his heart that he didn't come back, that he just didn't feel the communication was there the way it should have. And now he's in L.A., where well, he's from L.A., but he became almost a, a native son here in Atlanta. Pierce Johnson in the pen. Oh, and two on Darno. You guys had a two hour game in Miami? 203. 203. Mm -hmm. Fastest Yankee game since 1992. And even two hours, that one, against Cleveland. Swing and a miss. Darno down on strikes. Another look at the Abreu slider. 88 miles an hour, down and away. Wave and a miss. I think across the board, if you look at Major League Baseball's rules rules changes that we've talked about all year long, they've been pretty successful in what they were designed to do. The base running I mentioned before, more stolen bases, higher rate of success, OPS, batting average all up on the year so far. Also didn't hurt to have Sandy Alcantara dealing. 
quick innings. Yeah, he's all the way back after struggling in the first half. The Cy Young Award winner from last year. Everybody around the Marlins said that game on Saturday was the best he's pitched all year. He's been very inconsistent. But here's a dirty little secret, David. It's two hours and three minute game. And Meredith could back me up. It took about two hours to get to the hotel. You just can't get out of that ballpark. That's a little dramatic, but it did take a long time to get back to the hotel. Okay, give me time. It took an hour for the bus to leave, right? Well, you're you're talking about them getting on the bus. You're include you're including that in the time. Well, from the time the game ended, all right, to well, when we walked into the hotel, it was two hours, and the game took two hours. But I had to do post game, so I was in the clubhouse, so I wasn't waiting on the bus the whole time. No, I understand. Very contrarian. At least an hour driving. Yeah, but, you know, at that point, I'm pulling the ripcord. I'm going to go find a little bodega and have a couple cervezas and just wait it out. That would be that would have been the thing to do. There is some great Cuban food around there. Yeah, a little, little, little Havana right there. So a walk to Ozuna, and now the bases are loaded. Matt Blake will come out and talk with Abreu. Riley's at third, Olsen's at second, and Ozuna is at first. So here is Eddie Rosario, he's having a night. Two for three, two runs scored. Two ribbies, and now he has the bases loaded with one out. That one gets away from Higashioka, and scoring from third is Riley. Other runners move up. It's 9 2 Atlanta. Well, that's a tough one. You can see the slider spin in front of home plate, bounce all the way up to Higashioka's mask. Infield in, ground ball to Glaber. He throws the second, heads up play as he got Ozuna far off the bag, so he gets one of the lead runners, and that allows Rosario to reach at first base. Well, infield in, I mean, a heads-up play by Glaber. You better be sure. That wasn't a certainty, but it was really well executed as not only Glaber with the throw, but you can see Volpe getting back there and being in position to make the play. So now first and third with two outs, and here's Arcia. And a strike. Might have heard that in the background. The attendance, 42,717. It's a sellout. And the Braves aren't only doing well on the field. They're doing well off the field. That's the 41st sellout of the year here at Truist Park. Just to give you an idea of the state of velocity today, we talk about velocity, the increase in velocity. It was almost 16 years ago that Jabba Chamberlain broke in with the Yankees. Wow. Throwing 98 miles an hour, and we thought, wow. What stuff this guy's got. Well, Albert Abreu regularly throwing 98 here. Braves score another run. We go to the seventh. Seven have been called strikes. Still in there to start the seventh, and LeMayu will lead off. Pitch is high. 1-0. And a strike, 1-1. LeMayu 
Has missed five games with the calf issue. He's 0 for 2 in his return to the lineup. And that's past the diving Olsen into right field. So LeMayu picks up a single. And that'll do it for Freed. Snitker will take the ball from his 29-year-old lefty. And he'll try to get nine outs out of the bullpen. Freed gets a nice hand from the sellout crowd. And he leaves with a seven-run lead and a runner at first base. Nobody else. We could, we could make that happen, maybe. We could. Now he's saying he doesn't want to embarrass the freeze. Nice. Pierce Johnson takes over for Max Freed. Runner on first, nobody out. There's Volpe. And Pierce Johnson came over from the Rockies this year. Spent about three years with the Padres as well and broke in with the Cubs. He's been around the block. Be happy to be out of Colorado, I'm sure. Had a 6-0 ERA in Colorado and came over here to the Braves and in eight games he's given them nothing so far. One two on Volpe. Volpe with a bloop double hustle double the center field his last time up one for two. You can tell people from the Midwest how they pronounce states Michael you know it's not Missouri it's Missouri not Colorado. No it's not Colorado. No it's Colorado. Ground ball is short. There's one. That's all they'll get. Here's Higashioka. Haven't heard a ballpark or organ like this since Eddie Layton. The days of Eddie Layton tickling his wine. And he tries to take something from every visiting player like Oswaldo Cabrera. He played the Wizard of Oz theme. Yes. I don't know what he just played for Higgy. This should be two booted, but there's one on the first. It's a double play. Six, four, three. Time for the seventh inning. Eight ribbies and nine at bats for Nicky Lopez. Kansas City is rearview mirror. Just sounds better with the Y on the end, right, Nikki? It's not Nick, Nick Lopez. Nikki Lopez. Well, Nikki, Nikki is more playful. Nick seems serious. Can I call you Mikey? Mikey K. Um, Does it work for you? Only my nieces and nephew call me <laughs> Uncle Mikey. That's it. But you can call me whatever you want. We're friends. 
the voice of the Yankees, Mikey K. So finally retiring Lopez. Hey, tomorrow on Yes, the Yankees play the second game of three against the Braves here in Atlanta. Coverage begins at six with Audi batting practice in the pregame. Then we're back with the call on Yes and streaming on the Yes app. Stan puts it away to retire Acuna. It really is amazing how Michael Harris's numbers have come right back up after a really slow start. I think he's hit to the tune of over 370 to get his batting average back up in the 280s, almost 290 as he takes this at bat. Two and oh. Three and oh on Harris. Harris one for three RBI single and a walk. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning nine thirteen and oh for Atlanta two eight and oh for the Yanks. There's a strike three and one. And a walk to Harris that'll bring up Riley. Now you didn't have to do it because you're an elite starter, but I would think that pitching in a game like this, it, it must be tough to stay focused. Yeah, no, I I had to do it early in my career, certainly, and it it is you 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 have to really compartmentalize and just continue to go pitch to pitch and make your pitches, try to attack the strike zone. And I would think you don't you don't want to be selfish, but you know you don't want to give up runs too because that they belong to you. Yes, they do. And you know, Braves had a pretty decent year, but recently he's been giving up some earned runs. His personal numbers are up. He, he's in the mid fours now with his ERA. So the life of a reliever it can get away from you in a hurry. One or two bad outings and it could take you a month to catch up. Two and two. It's been a familiar formula for the Braves. Score early and often. And continue to add on. Continue to be relentless in your approach. Not only do these guys play every day, they don't take at bats off either. They give up nothing. Fly ball, shallow right coming on is Stanton. Makes the catch, and that will do it. So the Braves strand one. We go to the eighth. Hyundai scoreboard, 9-13 and 0, leading 2-8 and 0. Oswaldo Cabrera will lead it off. He's two for two. So Pierce Johnson, he had a 6-0 ERA with Colorado, or as David would say, Colorado. He has not allowed an earned run in his first eight games with the Braves. Change the scenery, a lot of winning. 
Maybe they have a secret sauce with their pitchers. Escape from Alcatraz. <laughs> He was a first-round pick in 2012 by the Cubs out of, I would say, Missouri State. David would say Missouri State. That's right. And he actually played with Luke Voigt on the Missouri State Bears in 11 and 12. One, two. Hi. Spent the 2019 season in Japan with the Tigers, handsome Tigers, 1.38 RA, 91 strikeouts in 58 innings. Joe Jimenez in the pen. Toward the end of your career, did you toy with the idea ever of going to Japan? I, no, I, I would have, though, if, if the opportunity presented itself. It just never really did. I loved going over there for the All-Star Tour. Mm -hmm. In 1988, I went with the, the American Major League Baseball All-Star Tour, and it was great. What an experience. Two. Swing and a miss. Darno gets an angle. So a strikeout put out 2 3. Well, tonight, after Yankees coverage, don't miss an all new episode of Homegrown The Path to Pinstripes as our docu crew heads back to Triple A Scranton to look at top prospects, including Oswald Peraza. Watch Homegrown presented by Wendy's tonight after the postgame on Yes and the Yes app. Here's IKF, two for three. RBI and a run scored. And a strike. When I went to Japan in 1988, I went with the late, great Roger Craig, who was with the Giants at the time and kind of the godfather of the split-finger fastball. And there were several pitchers on that staff that threw the splitter, including myself. And Roger helped me hone it. Kind of taught me a few little secrets on how to grip it and grip it and rip it, as he used to say. And a lot of Japanese pitchers over there were really watching us. And you've seen the evolution since 1988 that was, where a lot of Japanese pitchers now throw split finger fastballs and fork balls, and including Shohei Otani, Kodai Singa, his ghost fork ball. It really became a really popular pitch in Japan. So to us laymen, how could you explain the key point that he told you about throwing that pitch? Well, he taught me the difference between a fork ball and a split finger fastball. Line drive left field, another base hit for Kanafalefa. One of the few bright spots for the Yankees lately. Three for four tonight. Yeah, still swinging a magic wand as Kanafalefa. But he talked about the splitter being a, in the genre of a fastball as we see Kiner Falefa go up there and cover that pitch up and in. Fight it off and get another knock. He said don't split it too wide. For fork ball, you split your fingers as wide as you can, your middle finger and your pointer finger, mm -hmm. as wide as you can, like Bruce Souter used to do for the Cubs back in the day, the Hall of Famer. But he said no, just get outside the seams, don't split them so wide and throw it as hard as you can. And it became more like a super sinker. You're worried about harder momentum going down to retain some of the velocity. Now, the, the prototypical fork ball, is that tougher on the elbow than a splitter? I, you know, I would, I would imagine it's harder to learn because it's such a wide split. And it takes a lot of spin off the baseball. It's closer to a knuckleball, really, than a splitter, which is closer to a two-seam fastball. One and two. We talk about high spin curveballs and fastballs nowadays, RPMs. Well, it's just the opposite with, with splitters and fork balls and change-ups for that matter. Less spin, lower spin rates kind of allow for sinking more movement downward.
Line drive on one hop, eats up Arcia, and it goes into left field. Probably a base hit for Judge. That would be a second of the night. Boy, did he hit that hard. That's what he does. Aaron Judge hits the ball as hard as anybody. It's going to eat you up on the infield, too. That one was 102 miles an hour off a of Judge's bat. Really, nobody quite like Aaron Judge. Is he, you know, his style, his approach at the plate? I think the worst part about his injury at Dodger Stadium is that he was on pace for another 60 home run season this year. We kind of got robbed of that. Back to back 60 potentials. Grounded to third. There's one, and there's two. Torres banks into an around the horn double play. Yankee Strand one. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Some guys that model both uniforms. Which bridge did Pasquale get lost on going to the ballpark that one day? The G Dub, I think. It was a G Dub. He yeah. got lost on the G W. And then he got um, lost coming to a, a Braves game because this highway's that circle. On the loop. Yeah, got... the loop. He just kept going around and around and around and he was late. 285 it's called yeah <laughs> he couldn't figure out how to get off the loop yeah he was starting that night too I think yeah <laughs> one and two on Olsen he could pitch man he was pretty good he had a really good slider could throw it over and over again underneath a left-hander's hands just paint with that tight little slider and his brother Melito also pitched for the Yankees. He could pitch. It's one of my biggest nightmares, Michael. When I lay my head on my pillow at night, and I'm starting the next day. I'm going to miss the start. I'm going to be late. I'm going to get lost. Something. Now, refresh my memory. Wasn't there an opening day where the traffic was so major that you got saved by a New York policeman? I did, yes. What was it, the uh, the FDR you were on? It was the first playoff game. Okay. Down Don Mattingly's first playoff game. In 95? 1995. The Deegan was packed. In the American League, you're the starting pitcher. There's no batting practice. You can kind of, you know, you're on your own program. But the Deegan was a parking lot. And I was lucky. I found one, one of New York City's finest on the scooter. The guy on the scooter that was always out in front of the stadium found me. Took me on, took me on the shoulder, got me, got me through. Wow. It was, it was game one. Ken Griffey Jr. took me deep twice, but we ended up winning eight to four. This should be two. There's one, and there's two. I'll tell you what, David and. You know, obviously you pitched in so many World Series games for the Yankees, and playoffs, and I had the honor of, like, broadcasting on the radio. Those 95 games, had, the stadium was never louder, never more excited. They were there two hours before the game, jam-packed, because it had been such a long wait, and it was maddeningly going into the playoffs. There was just a magic to that. Yeah, there was nothing like it. I'd never seen anything like it either. And when Mattingly came out to run wind sprints, and the place just was crazy, shaking, people giving him standing ovation for running wind sprints before the game. Yeah, half hour before the game. Lined into center field. It's going to be played on a hop by Bader. As Ozuna is on for the fourth time. Two hits and two walks. And that felt like an earthquake when he hit that. 
And that, that's one of the great memories, too. Mattingly waited his whole career to get to the postseason, and then in that series at over 400. Yeah, he was great. He rolled back the clock. And I remember he talked about that after he said, I always wanted to see what I would perform like on that stage. And he showed himself. That was the only taste he ever got. Yep. And next up would have been the Indians, right? And you guys had played well against the Indians that year. Driven out to right field and deep. Stanton will turn and watch it go over the wall. A two-run home run for Rosario. And now it's 11-2 Atlanta. The lineup in a team that's feeling very good about itself. And they are relentless and they keep coming. Even in a game that's seemingly a blowout, they concede nothing and continue to make swings. Well, have a night. Rosario, three hits, four runs batted in, three runs scored. He's not one of their stars. Garcia popped it up, shallow right field. And Glaber makes the play, and that'll do it. Two more runs for Atlanta. We go to the ninth. The Yankees down by nine. Big night for him as Joe Jimenez will try to get the final three outs. And the first batter he will face, the pinch hitter, Greg Allen. Pinch hitting for Giancarlo Stanton, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. Foul back to the screen. So Greg Allen pinch hitting and the stadium organist played the Brady Bunch song. That's a deep dive. A Greg Brady reference. Yes. One and two. Swing and a miss. There's the organist. Well, stay tuned after the final out for tonight's WB Mason Yankees postgame. Get analysis from the studio and player reaction from the clubhouse. Plus, Aaron Boone on the manager's report. That's all coming up next on Yes and the Yes app. Now, the organist would show me some guts if the home plate umpire misses some calls and he breaks out three blind mice. Mm. It's been done. Been done. He, he's been thrown out, right? We've seen some organists thrown out in some games, I think, in the minor leagues. I mean, Brad Wilkerson got thrown out yesterday. He didn't come close to doing three blind mice. count on Bader. Bader and RBI ground out in the first one for three on the night. Two and two.
Bader quietly having a pretty good season. Obviously, two long stints on the IL, but he's 14 of 16 stolen bases. 266, seven homers, 37 ribbies. And you know what? He plays a heck of a center field. Yeah, he is elite defensively. You can play gold glove defense at a premium position and have league average offense. It's a valuable player. Fly ball shallow right coming on Acuna. And the Yankees are down to their final out. So Billy McKinney will pinch it for LeMahieu. So this road trip has not been good. They are now going to be two and five in the first seven games with two more against the team with the best record in baseball. Oh and one. And creeping dangerously close to 500. The Yankees with this loss will be just one game over. And really, if you go back over an extended period of time, a year, 162 games into last year, 200 games, the last 200 games or so, they're right around 500. That's kind of what you're staring at right now. Two and one on the pinch hitter, McKinney. So Judge, two for four today. Two of the eight and ten hits. Braves with 15 hits. Three and one on McKinney. And the best laid plans, Michael, right? I mean, who would have who would have thought the Yankees would have all the problems they've had in terms collectively, everybody, injuries. And McKinney works a walk in his pinch hitting appearance. There'll be plenty of time to dissect everything. You've got a radio show that does that sort of a thing. So. Oh, yeah. It's been, been fun in the operating room. There is much to unpack, but certainly Aaron Judge's injury is right at the top of it. Anthony Rizzo as well. Rodon's injury. Rodon's injury, never getting uh, getting going. Nesta Cortez injury. Volpe wraps one into left center field. On the run is Harris. He can't make the play. It's going to bound off the wall. That'll score McKinney. Going for third is Volpe. He will make it standing with a stand-up RBI triple. And the Yankees have their third run. See Volpe jump all over this low fastball down and out over the plate and dig it out and hammer it. If Michael Harris can't catch it, nobody's going to catch it. He covers some ground out there and almost got there. But once it get, gets by Harris, it's going to be an easy triple. And there's a strike to Higashioka. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Volpe at third. Now has 47 ribbies and two hits tonight. Two for four. Jimenez deals. And the Yankees are down to their final strike.
And the righty deals. Swing and a miss, and that'll do it. An uninspiring 11-3 Yankee loss to the Braves. Braves jumped on him early, and the Yankees, very brutally honest, they looked overmatched. Yeah, they were outclassed tonight, and Clark Schmidt, in his homecoming, was knocked out in the third inning after giving him nine hits, eight earned runs. It broke a string of 14 consecutive starts for him where he'd given up three earned runs or less. But certainly back down to earth, and the Atlanta Braves showed why they are the class of the National League this year and a favorite to make it to the World Series. Braves go to 76 and 42, and as David mentioned, the